In the middle of the forest in Uganda, a fugitive named Lei Schiffer approached a terrorist leader named Stephen Abano. Lei Schiffer conveyed a very tempting investment to him. Lei Schiffer said that he would hold a high-level gambling event in a few days, he promised to share the profits with Abano and will help him fund his missions. Hearing this tempting offer, Abano agreed and then handed over two big briefcases full of money to fund Lei Schiffer's plan. Meanwhile, in Madagascar, an MI6 agent named James Bond was stalking a man named Malaka that was suspected of being a bomb maker. Assisted by one of his colleagues named Carter, they were assigned to arrest him because recently, England had received several bomb terrors. Unfortunately, Malaka found out that he was being watched and tried to run away. In pursuit of Malaka, James was overwhelmed because it turned out that Malaka had good stamina and amazing parkour skill. They jumped from one building to another until finally, Malaka entered the embassy office. Knowing the only way to catch him was to follow him in, James entered the embassy office and immediately arrest Malaka. The alarm in the building went on and the security forces began showing up. While trying to escape from the building full of guards, James set an explosion in the embassy and managed to take the bag containing the bomb, including Malaka's cell phone, and left from there immediately. As soon as he felt safe, he immediately opened a message containing the word ellipsis which might be a secret code. From there, he traced where the message came from using a laptop. Sometime later, M, the chief of MI6 suddenly came, she had just returned from the MI6 headquarters. She immediately scolded James for killing the man earlier. What he did in the embassy's office gave them trouble uncovering the real funder of the entire network of terrorist syndicates which were getting more and more rampant. Meanwhile, Lay Schiffer, who was playing poker, got information that the embassy office was attacked by British agents. It turned out that Malaka was one of his men. He was angry because his plan went awry. From the information he got, James decided to go to the Bahamas. As soon as he arrived, James went to a hotel called the Ocean Club because it was known that the target he was going to hunt was there. With a little trick, he managed to enter the surveillance camera room. He looked at the footage to find someone suspected of being a member of an international terrorist syndicate. After matching the time with the message in Malaka's cell phone, James found the target who was known to be driving a silver Aston Martin. Fortunately, James with his charisma was able to get more information from the hotel's receptionist. He found out that the person is Demetrius. He lived near the beach. M received a report that James was in the Bahamas and was hacking into MI6 sites using M's name and password. He finally managed to open Alex Demetrius, Lee Schiffer, and some other people's data to collect various information related to the terrorist network. After getting all the information, James immediately went to the hotel lobby, because at that time, Demetrius was playing poker there. With a bit of gut, James dared to join the table, where he got to know Demetrius and his wife, Solange. James turned out to be a very good gambler and managed to win many times and gathered a lot of chips. He triggered Demetrius to bet all his chips and his Aston Martin. When they opened their cards, James came out victorious. James won all the chips in Demetrius's car. Abandoned by Demetrius, James immediately took the initiative to tease Solange to gather more information about Demetrius, her husband. From the information he got from Solange, it was discovered that Demetrius would meet someone at the museum. James immediately followed because he wanted to know whom Demetrius was meeting with, but when James wasn't looking, suddenly Demetrius already standing behind him while holding a knife pointing towards James's vital. James was forced to kill Demetrius because he realized that he was being followed and recognized his face. After that, James immediately took Demetrius's cell phone to find out whom he was contacting. It was finally known that Demetrius had deliberately come to the museum to give a bag to someone who was now going to the Miami International Airport. Suddenly, the man that received the bag found out that James had been following him. He then went to a room and disguised himself as one of the guards. James immediately contacted him so she could provide information to the airport security that someone was carrying a bomb. Based on the information obtained, the perpetrator was assigned a mission to blow up a Skyfleet S-570 prototype plane. James quickly pressed the fire alarm to get everyone out of the airport. Surprisingly, the man in disguise had hijacked a car parked in front of the airport and then went into the hangar to hijack a refueling truck there. He hung a keychain that turned out to be a small bomb to the tanker. James found out that the man would try to crash the truck into the plane. James immediately chased and desperately jumped into a truck to stop it, and with his action, James immediately got into the cabin and beat the man. James almost fell off the truck, but luckily, he was able to hook his foot on the seatbelt. That was when he saw the keychain. James immediately took it. The man managed to get out of the truck and left James with the truck approaching the plane at high speed. 
Luckily, James managed to stop the truck right before it crashed into the plane from a distance. The terrorist smiled because he had another way to detonate the bomb from a distance, but when he pressed the trigger button for the bomb, the bomb exploded right beside him and killed him instantly. The incident uncovered that the motive for the bombing was propaganda so that the shares bought by Lay Schiffer could double, but with the incident earlier, he suffered a loss of $100 million. Meanwhile, M, who had landed in the Bahamas, called James because Solange, the woman that provided James with the information about Demetrius was found dead. James believed that this was the act of Lay Schiffer who ordered an assassin to remove traces feeling that Lay Schiffer had gone too far, M tasked James to participate in Texas Hold'em that Lay Schiffer held to arrest him and dismantle the International Terrorism Syndicate, then without hesitation, he agreed and departed by train. In this mission, James was accompanied by a woman from the government named Vesper Lind who was assigned to guard the money that James would use to play poker. As soon as they arrived in Montenegro and got two fake passports to carry out the mission, they went to stay at a luxurious hotel and were given a sports car to support James's mission. The car was equipped with a med kit that has an antidote in it, in case James was poisoned during his mission. After that, James and Vesper also met an old man known as Rene Mathis. He was an informant who worked with MI6 to catch Lay Schiffer. It was also known that Lay Schiffer had come to Montenegro the day before with some of his men. In the evening, James and Vesper were seen getting ready to come to the poker game. Shortly after, James went ahead because the event would start soon. When he got there, everyone was briefed by the betting holder named Mendel. He explained that everyone who took part in poker must fill in six-character password to maintain security if they become a winner. The event finally started. The participants started betting. The players were focused on their game, but when Lay Schiffer raised his bet, everyone but James decided to fold. James continued to raise his bet too. It turned out that Lay Schiffer won the bet because he had a full house. Luckily, James instead chose to fold before the card was shown. After the game, James asked permission from the committee to rest while taking a tracking device that had been prepared. He planned to insert the tracking device into Lay Schiffer's inhaler to find out which room he stayed in at the hotel. Round after round passed and they had spent four hours playing poker until the committee ordered all the players to rest and come back within one hour. James, who was desperate to kill Lay Schiffer, went up to the fourth floor with Vesper to find Lay Schiffer's room, but when he got there, James was surprised because Abano was already there to collect the money that he had invested. Feeling that soon there would be fisticuffs, James immediately ordered Vesper to return to her room, but they were too late. Abano saw them when he and his men were about to leave the hotel. Without any difficulty, James, helped by Vesper, managed to kill Abano and his men. After that, they went back to their room to change clothes. Long story short, after changing his suit, James immediately returned to the table to continue his poker game. A few hours later James was involved in an intense duel with Lay Schiffer when he placed a 500,000 bet for a full house card. Lay Schiffer then raised his bet to a million dollars. Unexpectedly, James immediately challenged him again by doing a re-raise to $2 million, because he thought that Lay Schiffer was just bluffing, but surprisingly, Lay Schiffer decided to all-in and bet all $14.5 million. James also did the same. He was sure that he would win the game, but it turned out that Lay Schiffer came out victorious because she had a four-of-a-kind jack card which was indeed higher than James' card, even though he had a full house. After witnessing this tough battle, the committee ordered everyone to rest. For the defeat, James was not allowed to use the additional $5 million from the Ministry of Treasury because Vesper was sure that James would waste all the money. James decided to immediately kill Lay Schiffer by using a knife from the dinner table until a man stopped him. The man said that he would provide additional capital for James to return to playing poker. The man is Felix Leiter, an agent from the CIA whose goal was also to catch Fry. The deal was Felix will immediately arrest Lay Schiffer as soon as James manages to beat him, while the poker winnings will belong to James entirely. Long story short, James returned to the poker table with chips worth $5 million. He also asked for a glass of martini, but the moment he drank it, he felt his heart beating faster than normal. He knew someone had poisoned him and felt the effects of the poison spread throughout his body. James rushed to the parking lot and then got into his car. He contacted the MI6 headquarters so that the staff there could guide James using the first aid kit that was prepared. From there, James put a defibrillator on his chest because it was known that the poison was a high-dose heart booster, and to reduce his heartbeat back to normal, James has to inject an antidote and use a defibrillator if he starts to feel blackout. Unfortunately, he didn't manage to activate the defibrillator on time and blacked out. Luckily, Vesper arrived on time so James could be saved. 
After that, James immediately changed his suit to continue the game to beat Lay Schiffer. There were four remaining players on the table, making the game even more intense because the stakes this time had risen to a high level. James was starting to be able to collect chips again from his wins over other players. After the dealer distributed the cards, one of the players from Japan took an all-in worth of $6 million because he felt that his card would bring him victory. Suddenly, Lay Schiffer raised his bet to $12 million because he felt that it was an insult. James immediately risked all of his chips, which were worth $40.5 million. When they opened all the cards, surprisingly, James managed to win the poker match with a straight flush. Everyone was amazed by James' greatness. After accompanying James to dinner, Desper asked for permission to leave first because Mathis was waiting for her in the lobby, but James's instincts tell him that something bad will happen to Vesper. His instinct was true because the moment Vesper left the lobby, she was kidnapped by someone unknown. James immediately chased the kidnapper using his car, but when James entered a sharp turn, the kidnapper put Vesper in the middle of the road and almost made James hit her with his car. Thankfully, he managed to turn his car at the expense of the car itself. It turned out that the perpetrator of the kidnapping was Lay Schiffer who was still desperate because the money to fund his plan was in James's hand. At that moment, Lay Schiffer also said that Mathis was his accomplice who disguised himself as the informant for MI6. James and Vesper were brought to an unknown place and tortured. In that place, James's clothes were stripped away until there was not even a single thread attached to his body. He was forced to sit on a chair with a hole in the middle of it. Lay Schiffer tortured James by pounding his private parts until he gave the passcode. <coughs> Feeling irritated because James didn't want to give the passcode, Lay Schiffer was desperate to cut off James's private parts, but when he was about to cut it, an assassin suddenly showed up and shot him dead. Finally, James was saved and brought to the hospital to recover his condition. Long story short, Mathis came because he felt strange about why James and Vesper were left alive. Suddenly, two agents of MI6 came to arrest him for knowing that he had betrayed them. A few weeks later, James's condition began to improve. Not long after, Mendel came to withdraw the money from the match which amounted to $120 million which would be sent to the Ministry of Treasury account. After the money was sent, they both went on vacation to Venice to celebrate James's success in defeating Lay Schiffer. During their vacation, James told Vesper that he loved her very much and that he will leave MI6 to live a life with her. The next day, Vesper asked James for permission to go to the bank to validate a report regarding the money transferred to the Ministry of Treasury's account. A few minutes later, James, who was waiting for Vesper in the hotel room, was suddenly surprised because M contacted him and asked about money. From there, James realized that Vesper had lied to him all this time, but he didn't know what was Vesper's motives to have the heart to do something like that. It didn't take long for James to finally find Vesper who was meeting someone while handing over the suitcase filled with money, it turned out that the person was aware of James's presence. A shootout was inevitable. The shootout made a floating house start to sink because one of the bullets blow one of the house's float. James had to fight two people with that condition, but with his impeccable skill, he managed to beat them both. After successfully paralyzing them, James immediately rushed to save Vesper who at that time, was stuck in the elevator. James had to accept the reality that Vesper preferred to die as a regret. She was too embarrassed for lying to James, who had loved her sincerely. A few days later, James found out that Vesper had previously worked with someone named Mr. White who was also Lay Schiffer's accomplice. Vesper did all that because her boyfriend was kidnapped by the organization behind Lay Schiffer so they blackmailed Vesper and threatened to kill her boyfriend unless she wanted to cooperate. In other words, Mr. White had betrayed Lay Schiffer and just wanted the money. James then decided to find Mr. White's whereabouts. Finally, James immediately found out Mr. White's whereabouts. Without difficulty, James managed to find Mr. White who had just arrived at his luxurious mansion, and without further ado, James immediately shot Mr. White's right leg so he couldn't run anywhere. He felt his anger escalating at that time and was about to kill Mr. White as revenge for what he did. When James was about to shoot Mr. White's head, the film ended. <laughs>